And, and thank the chairman for his I, work I on that. I thank my colleague, and as much as I'd like to continue the conversation, Senator Barrasso, you're up. Now, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Secretary, thank you. I just came from the Energy Committee where we're discussing energy for America, which is affordable, available, and reliable for the American people. So energy producers in my home state of Wyoming and across the country are facing a whole of government assault from this administration on that component of energy. President Biden has shown time and time again that he's going to use every tool at his disposal to target the American energy industry. He's making life very difficult for the men and women who are working to provide American families and our allies with affordable, available, reliable energy. And President Biden has recently banned leases for oil and gas. He's halted permitting of natural gas pipelines and storage facilities. Last month, he announced a new export ban on liquefied natural gas. And once again, the Biden administration is proposing more than $110 billion in new tax increases on energy production. Uh, my former colleague, Mike Enzi, used to always talk about a book and it reminded me of this, listening to Senator Brown, it was called The Hidden America. It says, from coal miners to cowboys, the people who keep the lights on and who keep food on the table, the people that many, many in Americans don't see, don't know about, and the impact that they have on their lives. So th this tax proposal that you and the president have come across is going to deny our energy producers the ability to recover costs associated with the production. Uh, your proposal uh, repeals necessary and ordinary deductions that give producers parity to every other business, large and small in America. And to me, the, the tax code is being weaponized. And under your policies, many energy companies would cease to exist. Uh, these are the very companies that keep the lights on in our homes, that put gas in our cars, provide the building blocks for materials that go into everyday products. So we, what would you say to the small energy producer in Wyoming, for example, who is concerned that they're not going to be able to continue to operate if they can't deduct these expenses? Well, I would say that, um, first of all, we will need oil and gas through a substantial um, transition and um, oil production has, um, I believe, reached new highs. It's um, expanded quite a lot over the last um, year or two. Um, but on a long-term basis, clearly the goal is to move to clean energy, which um, is important for reducing greenhouse gas emissions so that we can um, be on a livable planet, and um, we want to make sure that that transition proceeds in a way that we don't destroy the planet in the process. And there have long been tax preferences for oil, gas, and coal that we believe distort markets by encouraging more investment in fossil fuels that would, than would occur under a neutral system. And so there are a set of proposals um, that are intended to level the playing field to um, reduce those advantages that fossil fuel sector has enjoyed and to speed the process of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Also, I would say that this is in, supports energy security because um, in global markets where, although the U.S. plays a significant role, we also have um, countries in the Middle East and Russia um, playing critical roles in the global oil market. Geopolitical events um, can have very significant domestic yeah. spillovers, and we won't experience that when we increase our uh, dependence on uh, wind, solar, hydrogen, um, electric vehicles. No, no, Madam, Madam Secretary, thank you. I appreciate you. And as you are well aware, emissions in the United States have been down and down and down and down and down over the last 15 to 20 years. And it's what's happening around the world where emissions are going up. And I would say we're here we're all trying to make energy as clean as we can, as fast as we can, and do it in ways that don't raise costs for consumers. Because they're the, ultimately decide, the ultimate deciders about how our country is governed and how we rule and how we move forward. You know, this morning I sent a letter to you and your department signed by 24 senators, I'm sure you haven't seen it yet, seen it. Uh, on the energy tax proposals, which I believe are disastrous. Uh, Chairman Wyden, I ask unanimous consent to include this into the record. 
the letter outlines concerns about the tax proposals on oil, natural gas, coal producers that we've been discussing. Uh, so I, I just want to ask you to give you a chance to clarify your energy tax proposals. In the Treasury Green Book, the summary of the administration's tax proposal says, quote, these oil, gas, and coal preferences encourage more investment in the fossil fuel sector that would occur under a, a neutral system. This may, market distortion is detrimental to the long-term energy security. Do you believe that oil, natural gas, and coal production is detrimental to energy security of the United States? Because I think you just said it is. Because if we don't have the solar and the... So it sounded to me like you were saying it's, that additional coal production and oil and gas is detrimental to our country. Time, time I, I didn't say that. I said Matt, it's a, the distortion is detrimental because it impedes... Uh, clean energy production. Time we need oil and expired. gas, but there needs to be um, a more level playing field. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Whitehouse. Thank you. Uh, 